Hey guys, Cody here from the Choco Bros, here to bring you episode two of Choco Views. Today I'm thrilled to be joined by one third of the Triple Triad podcast, the Manderville man himself, Mr. Andy Carmona. Andy, how you doing today? Oh man, thanks for having me on your show, episode two. I love it. I loved episode one, so I'm excited to get into this. Awesome. Thank you. Hey, thanks for listening, man. All right, Andy, so uh, we're going to get started with just some basic questions. Um, how did you get into the Final Fantasy trading card game? Uh, it wasn't until, uh, I believe, when the when the starter decks were getting a little bit into rotation out here in the U.S. where you can, I think, only purchase them in eBay or, like, no actual stores carrying them, right? So mm-hmm. John actually found these online. Um, he was like, yo, let's definitely pick these up and let's start playing. And I'm like, hell yeah, dude, let's definitely do it, man, because I love Final Fantasy. I've been playing it since I was a child. And, like, it's it's something that's just been resonating me through my whole life. Um, so he decides to, to buy them, but we come to a little, like, impasse where it's like, I want the water starter deck, but he wants a water starter deck as well. So mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, man, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and just take the lightning one, I guess. You know, I don't really like 13 or whatever, but, but I'll pick it up. So you can actually thank him for putting me on lightning. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, so I, I take it as if you guys don't know already, mono lightning is uh, is Andy's favorite element, I believe. If I'm correct. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's definitely one I've been more successful with, but I, I do like other elements. But I, this is the one I do take for major events. Okay. Um, so you said you played the Final Fantasy games uh, in your past, and probably I'm sure still today. Uh, what's your favorite Final Fantasy game? Um, I actually did play some of the the ones on uh, SNES, and I, I was like, I wasn't old enough to really know what's going on, so I'm just like, oh, these games are a little bit kind of boring, and then I'll jump straight back to like Yoshi's Island or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the one that really like caught my attention because I still found the the title familiar was actually Final Fantasy VII, and um, I didn't know a lot of things with like Materia Junction and um, how to beat the Emma Webs. I didn't even know there were like different weapons after you beat Sephiroth, but throughout the whole game, I was just like, oh my god, this game's awesome. Then you do like limit breakers and everything. It's like, what? These guys have these crazy attacks. Um, my party always consisted of, uh, what was it? Uh, we had Sid, Cloud, and who else did I even think? I didn't know at the time to like unlock Vincent or Yuffie or anything, so I think I kept Barrett in there because I thought guns were cool, so I kept <laughs> Barrett in there. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, man, Final Fantasy VII all the way. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big Final Fantasy VII get, fan. It's probably my favorite as well. Um, I started playing it when I was about five years old, so ever since then I was hooked. Um, <clears throat> so we got your favorite game. Uh, so I'll say, okay, so you have a quite a quite a long list of accomplishments so far already in the Final Fantasy trading card game. Um, so we're just going to go through them and have, them, have you talk briefly about them. Uh, first off, we're going to start with the Petit Cup in Tampa. How was that? Oh, man, it was, it was awesome. Uh it was my second experience at a larger tournament, mm-hmm. um, but it was definitely something that I was still still getting used to the whole competitive aspect of it. But I did really put my my, my effort into learning what's being played. Um, I believe we were on Opus Four at the time, and I just kind of really wanted to take lightning, but also take a little my own spin to it. Um, so just kind of like looking to see what's being played because my local scene wasn't. It wasn't alive yet, so all I really had was uh, watch YouTube videos, play against uh, Emo Tempest, uh, or just you know, kind of like make believe. Oh, this was a card that I remember seeing being played a lot, um, and one of them was actually Shantoto. Mm-hmm. So I kind of remembered all that stuff. And that's when we actually had uh, Alcid a bit, um, not Alcid, uh, Hildebrand available, and I was like, oh man, this card is actually pretty good. He kind of survives that stuff, so. I uh, was looking around and seeing if anybody was including him in the list, and a lot of times you, you weren't. You were still seeing like a standard um, list with, I believe at the time, a lot of people were doing like the Grand Cross X Death. And I'll be very honest with you, Cody, man. Like, I don't know how to use that card. No. I tried it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's definitely not for me. It's not my strategy. Yeah, I've tested uh, it before, and I, I'm not a big fan either. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a great card. I just, I, I don't get it. I don't know when to do it, and I, I never will. I, I, I've come to terms with that. So I was like, yeah, I was like, you know what? 
this guy looks pretty cool. And I remember playing him, like seeing it in like Final Fantasy fourteen. So I'm like, just man, I'll throw this guy in the deck and, and see how well it does. And then um actually kind of funny story is that John was telling me, Oh yeah, it goes with the with the backup. I'm like, There's a backup for it. Right now. <laughs> yeah, so that's kinda how it came to be. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Um I threw three in the deck and he helped me win the petite cup. Right now and uh so I know you. I'm sure you don't remember like most of your matchups back then. But do you remember like your record after Swiss by chance? I I think it was seven rounds and I was five two. Okay. Uh, I, went, I went up. To, I went undefeated until I went against. I'm trying to remember because I did play uh, Alfred Clausen, and uh, that guy just destroyed me. I'm like, okay, I don't want to play him top eight. <laughs> Like at all? <laughs> yeah, no, he's he's a great player. I actually recently just got to meet him through the, through the Choker Bros podcast. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, dude, the guy's fundamentals are through the roof. Like, yeah, he's, and definitely. he's he's a really nice guy. Um, so uh, when you got, what did you guys did you guys cut to top eight or top sixteen? We did. I, remember, I think it was top eight. There was about fifty people there. I think it. So I think it was top eight. Just because I think I. Vaguely remember the picture of you, like Max, and I think Zach as well. Yeah, I think he made top eight, if I'm not mistaken. That's a good question. I'll have to bring that picture. There, there, there definitely was a picture of all of us. Right. Doing, uh, we're trying to, was it, we're just showing like some prize support or something. Okay. So there definitely was, was quite a bit of us. Definitely a lot of uh, the big names from, uh, yeah, you see like Max. Max was in there. Yeah. Um, he, was, he was my semifinals. And, uh, uh, I mean, I don't want him to relive this moment, but he actually, uh, he could have beat me, but mm-hmm. instead he was on, he was on wind water and he decided to, uh, attack with one of his forwards, but he didn't realize that I could just haste the next turn and just hit him for the seventh point of damage. So oh, okay. He just was not happy with himself, which allowed me to get into the finals. And I played, uh, I played against a water earth, uh, build, mm-hmm. uh, it was piloted by Tony Hedia, who's like one of the best Orlando players out here. Um, and he was playing like the uh, Cecil, like the legendary Cecil and the, uh, what's his guy's name, Raban, like the forward Raban, so he can just come out and just like ping something for 9k. And since Cecil doesn't like, you don't take ability damage, he can just survive. Oh, wow, that's, a, that's actually a sweet combo. I've never even thought about using that. <laughs> oh man, let me tell you. It's, no, it's okay. just a way to just control the board. It's, and he, I mean, he has access to Shantoto and... He's got the nice water cards as well, so yeah, it was definitely a powerful deck to use. No, that's awesome, yeah. Okay, so after you, so you win the Petite Cup, and you said, was that your first big tournament, or was that? No, that was the, that was the second one. So the big one that we actually went to, which I wish was still happening, um, for reasons I don't know, I, I can't really get into it, but it was the uh, the, the Summoner series that um, that Magnet was was hosting with the ARG, right? And so okay. that one was hosted out in. Uh, in Orlando, and that's actually where I met a lot of these top players. Well, I didn't know that they're top players at the time, but they're just really good, really established. Like they just knew their stuff. One of them being Sam. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm going in there. I'm this, you know, bright-eyed kid. Like, oh man, this is great. Other people play this game. This is awesome. Right, right. Um, so at I- the time, I was actually running Wind Lightning, so the I was really, really hyped for the uh, was it the Onion Knight Legendary combo. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, okay, running. so this was what Opus Four was out now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Opus Four is still out. Uh, it was newer, and then everybody was just like talking about all these nice new combos and everything like that. And I had recently built the the Lightning Wind deck. And it was really fun, but I built it a little bit differently because a lot of people were playing the uh, the Cactuar with the Orlando. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I, I never included the the Cactuars. Um, big mistake because they they do help a lot. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, I've uh, I dabbled with the deck a little bit. Um, I actually almost took it to uh, the Petite Cup in Kansas uh, when I went to that, uh, but I chickened out at the last minute and went with Wind Water. Um, uh, but uh, so you got fourth at the ARG Summoner Series, correct? Yeah, that's that's correct. Um, I so did, I did like the the top eight was it, it kind of sucked because. Um, what happened with my with my opponent? Uh, unfortunately, I think he. Just if I remember this correctly, he at the time the new Terra came out, the light one, mm-hmm. and I think what happened was he wrote that one down because he was basing his deck off of like 
the FF Dex list, but he didn't realize that he didn't have that, or he had the other Terra. Something happened. Something happened, and like, and so they when they deck checked them, it was like, no nah, man, unfortunately, you know, you have a wrong card in here. You gotta take a round one loss. Oh man! Wow. Yeah, because uh, yeah, that that was just the rules, and I was like, man, it kind of sucks, dude. But um, I mean, we played it out, and I just got the second the second win. I mean, it was still hard because he's playing. Um, He's playing the ice matchup, so uh, at the time it was still relatively new. We, you know, we don't have like the the six package or turbo discard and like that, but it was still ice is still pretty pretty good. Right. No. Yeah, I think ice has always been pretty good, but yeah, definitely having a round one loss, you had a a pretty good advantage. Um, so after you won your top eight match, who did you have to face after that? If you remember, the one, the, the one and only man, <laughs> Sam Prime. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I so just, he was. I just, he yeah, was, I just saw him like as a guy in a suit, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, I think I think the first time I ever saw him, he had like a, a suit jacket on, and I was uh, yeah. I had I didn't really know who he was at the time. Uh, obviously, now I'm pretty good friends with him, and I know him well. Uh, but uh, he, what was he on? Was he on the uh, the Earth Water Monsters? He was on the Earth Water Monsters. Yeah. Um, Which, by the way, the, the my my top eight opponent, uh, he's gonna kill me if I don't. Give him like a shout out. But that was uh, Zachary Nieves, which I actually played again in another tournament. But yeah, he was my my top eight, which is really really awesome, dude. Oh, okay, awesome. So, <laughs> uh, so let's see. Then you also, I'm not sure which order you did these in, uh, but you also played at the Cards of Evilies tournament, the one year anniversary. Yeah. So I think the in order it was uh, the ARG, uh, the T Cup, and then the next one. Yeah, it was the Parts of it was okay. So you got you got fourth at ARG, which is pretty good. Being fairly new to the, like the competitive scene, I know it was still really just getting going at that point. And then you win the Petite Cup, so you're on a pretty good roll. And then you, you go to the Cards of Evilies tournament. Tell me about that experience. Oh man, so this is this is this is fun because so we're out here in Miami, Florida. Orlando's about a three and a half four hour drive, mm -hmm. and they decided to host a tournament. Um, more towards the evening ish, you know, maybe about three, four PM, something like that. Mm -hmm. So we got a buddy that lives up in Orlando. So we're like, okay, cool. We'll like go up there real early. Maybe we like might take a nap or something. Well, no, we kind of just like drove straight from our place back in Miami. We took four hours. We went over there. We got some stuff because I really wanted to stream this. I didn't realize how hard it was to actually stream. So while we're actually driving up, I'm like. Facebook messaging uh, James Lockwood. I'm like, hey man, I got this stuff, and uh, it'll be really cool to do this. And we just gotta make sure we have the like, internet connection. And, and he's like, yeah, 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 man, we, we can do this. That's really cool, man. And, and you don't want anything for this? I'm like, nah, 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 screw it. I just wanna, I just want people to see this because you know, once again, it, it's been some time since the Petit Cup, so I wanna like show these faces again and maybe put some new faces on stream just to show like the power of Florida TCG players. You know, we've got some real cool talent down here and it's it'll be a shame that you know we're not broadcasting this stuff more right now that's awesome so were you able to get it set up uh it was a very like janky setup <laughs> i want to say i want to say that i tuned into that but i'm not i've watched so many streams of the game at this point i can't remember oh man if you don't remember like constant screaming the, the beautiful <laughs> max williams face on and off the stream you know, the shaky camera, like, I feel like all those things just made it a little bit more magical. Like, it was a terrible stream, I'll give it that. Like, <laughs> the, the connection was just not strong enough to support the video, and then I didn't really know how to work the mic, so I'm picking up a mic off my laptop, which I took my work laptop, I only own a laptop, I have a computer PC, and I was like, that work won't mind, I'll take this one. <laughs> No, but that's someone awesome. Work is, yeah, if someone at work is listening, I, I do apologize. I, I did bring it back. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened to the F key, but, you know, it, I, I can still type. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, yeah. So that ended up being a pretty big tournament. Wasn't that like 40 players or so? I've heard yeah, a little we, bit about it. Yeah, we were, we were about 40 players uh, jammed up in this like really nice, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's like a little beach house or something or just something that like, so like when you go and you, want to rent like a townhome or something you know how they have like the, the reservation hall or whatever mm -hmm. um we were in there um it was pretty big but when you already start like want to fit 40 people in there yeah it, it can feel kind of cramped so we got people out lounging at the pool area i mean the lights are dim so it's kind of hard to see what's going on but all in all i mean everybody just loved it and i think like 
at the very end of the day, when you when you look back at something like that, it's like regardless of where you're playing, I mean, you could you could play on the sidewalk if you want. Um, if you're enjoying this game, you're gonna have fun no matter where you're at or who's hosting it or whatever. Like it's just it's it's the people, you know, it's the people and it's the game. No, yeah, absolutely. The community is really the. I mean, it's really just the, what keeps this game going. I think and makes it so much fun to be around. Um, oh, okay. Now, I, sorry. I, oh, you're um, all good. I just, yeah, I just want to mention that, like, especially like the community, because back when I started uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, I mean, I'm saying like I've been we're almost what two years now into, or like a year and a half into Final Fantasy card game, mm-hmm. and I have yet to have a card stolen. And like two weeks into Yu-Gi-Oh, I had like my deck stolen. I was like, what? Oh no, yeah, I, I I absolutely know that. I've never actually had a card stolen myself, um, but that was one of the first things. Like my first regional, I was going to. They were like, "Hey man, don't leave anything behind. Don't turn your back for a second. And with yeah, this game, I can leave like a deck completely just out on the table, walk away for <laughs> ten minutes, and come back, and it's going to be there. Like, yeah, you come back, and there's actually like three guys around there. Like, hey, we didn't know who this was, but we started to guard it. It's like, okay, right? No, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so. uh so now moving into Opus Five, uh, you went to or I'm sorry. First of all, the Cards of Evilies tournament. We didn't get to. How did you do at the at the Cards of Evilies tournament? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I went. I think it was like uh, six or seven rounds. I can't remember. But once again, I did like four, two, or I, I lost twice, but I still managed to get top eight seated. Okay. Um, mad fun, and but at the time. Everybody from Tampa decided to try like this really cool Palom Poem deck that no one's ever seen before, especially in Florida. And they were just cleaning up with that deck. I'm talking, it does it does so much, and, and you don't expect it. So it was just cleaning house. And uh, luckily for me, I got to play it three times. Um, <laughs> Zach, Angel, and Sam were piloting the deck. Um, all three had different variations to it, um, but, uh, but the core was still there. And let me tell you, like you can't take your eyes off those cards for a second because they all do something. Not to mention, it runs like the Fusoya with the Ephemeral Summon Engine. So you like, okay, even if I do get an opening, I'm gonna hit an EX burst. So right. I plan for that too. Right. Um, so, so the whole Chocobro crew was was rolling with a very similar deck. Absolutely. So actually, round one, since uh, since I set up the stream, James was kind of have to put me on stream mm-hmm. table one. Uh, or whatever, like yeah, the stream and round one. Um, I forgot to hit record, so that never oh, actually no. recorded. Yeah, <laughs> it got streamed, but <laughs> it wasn't recorded. Um, but it was against Zach, and unfortunately, like now that I know what the deck does, I can definitely recall 100. percent He he didn't draw the right piece the pieces for it, and you know my deck being my deck, it just you know just ran him over. It was just so a lot of haste, you know. So he wasn't he was never able to really catch up and set up what he needed to do. Like, there was no Fusoya. I mean, he barely saw the the twins. Uh, it was really just, oh, here's a Phoenix play, but here I have to overextend, and then Vivi comes out, and that's it. Right, now. Okay, so you uh, you said you went 4-2 or 5-2. and two. You said you only lost twice. Uh, do you remember who your losses were to or what they were against? Obviously, you yeah. were on Mono Lightning. Yep. Um, so I lost, I believe... I think I, I've lost to the Palom Forum. I think I played Angel in Swiss, mm-hmm. and I and I did lose and I did lose to him, and then I lost to Mono Win, and uh, that was actually pretty fun because you know they were in, incorporating cards like the new uh, the the new Arc, mm-hmm. um, Splicillion. You got um, what's her name uh, Adele, and it's just like I never drew any of my answers, but by the time I did, I mean all these cards are. are horizontal so I can really target them and right. I was like oh damn like by the time I realized it I'm like oh this is five points of damage and I've only done two nah, <laughs> this is game I'm, this is done <laughs> uh, and then like the, the the seven point of damage was just like oh activate arts ability and he's got like a spice alien ability so it's like oh well unblockable and there it goes right but it was really fun it was a really fun game okay so uh did you guys you guys cut to top eight on that event we did Okay, so how how did how did top eight go? Oh, I I played all, <laughs> all the Joker pros again. I started out against uh, oh, Alfred, wow. uh-huh. who was on who was on a it was a, I think it was ice water. I believe there was Moogles okay. in it. I remember seeing the Sarah. So 
the, one of the one of the deciding plays that happened, which I found to be like it was it was awesome. It was extraordinary. Um, <laughs> I was attacking with uh, with a Gilgamesh on deck, uh, the starter deck one, and mm-hmm. he decides to block with I forget which forward, but it was it was a big one. It was like eight K, and he goes. He's, he doesn't have much cards in hand, but he has some resources in the backup, and he Bismarck's my Gilgamesh, so he, so he has it, right? Right. And so I'm at 4K, but I've got cards in hand, so I'm like, okay, I'll let it resolve, and we'll start a new stack. It's like, all right, cool. I'll pitch a card. I go pump, pitch a card, pump, pitch a card, pump. <laughs> I brought him back. I brought him back from 4K to 9K. Okay, cool. Break him. <laughs> oh wow! So you basically dumped five cards. But, yeah, dude. I mean, I just like it was either that or take the the seventh point of damage, um, which then I just proceeded to. That was that was the game three. Um, we both went one one, and I was on my six point of damage. He was on a six point of damage, but that just determined the game. Right. Very cool. At least, I, at least I had that. I wasn't like color locked with the with an emperor in hand, so I can like pitch the extra you know fifth card. Right. No. No. Sometimes happens. Yeah. Absolutely. But, uh, no, that was just fun. That's I mean, a pretty. That that's was, a pretty sweet way to win, or to like, to turn the game around when he thinks yeah. when he thinks he's probably got you. Um, so who you who did you face in top four? So top four, I, I played Sam, and Sam was piloting the the pilot forum. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we went to to game three, and he didn't draw any backups. And there's photo proof that my ex burst were uh, Adea, Adea, Odin. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, I had my backup set up and everything, so the days were live. I believe I had three backups, um, but yeah, that that game three was just like you don't come back from that. That's just how lightning works. No, yeah, ex burst can definitely completely shut down one person. I mean, you can you can win a game very easily off of it. Yeah, yeah, especially when they like when they come at the perfect time. But um, well, I'm sure that was that. I'm sure that was some like sweet revenge because he had beaten you at the ARG, right? Yeah, man. I mean. It still haunts me to this day because, like, it, that moment was just so embarrassing. Only because we were on game three, I put so much damage on board, and he just managed to just recover uh, from like he was on six points of damage. I was good, man. I had zero, and then little by little, like that's it. Like I ran out of fuel. Like I was pitching, I was putting a, a backup, uh, so it was like a second backup, and I had the Lulu that breaks the backup to ping for five k. Mm-hmm. So I was just like exhausting everything. It got to a point where he started building a board presence uh, at any moment. Like he can get Azo or whatever. He can just he could just do things. He had Tom Bear, and, he's, um, and I couldn't do anything. I couldn't like retaliate. So then here comes one point of damage. Little by little, he's sneaking in another point of damage, another point of damage, and it just gets to a point now where it's just like okay, now we just have to. I just have to outplay for that last point of damage but I, i'm at this point i'm like mentally fatigued i can't speak i can't talk there was a ruling question then when they asked me to like explain it i don't know what the hell came out of my mouth <laughs> but the, the uh, what i was told because i don't remember any of this afterwards like everybody looked at each other like what the hell did he just say <laughs> and i'm just like uh what <laughs> No, yeah, if yeah, you're man. playing in a long tournament, I mean, it is pretty exhausting, and stuff like that's gonna happen. So you got oh, your, you got your, uh, you got your revenge against Sam Prime, and then you move on to the finals, right? Yep, and I had to play against Angel, who, uh, who got top, um, who was in top eight, and then once again he was just demolishing the pound for him. Um, mind you, at this time it was. Well, I would say it was almost like 1 a.m. already at this time, and like we stopped to play out two out of three. So, but we grind it out, man. I mean, we play such a great game. Um, he had his buddies on like like his side. I had my buddies on my side, and we're just like, all right, man, this is it. It's for all the marbles. And had I known second place was gonna take the squall, I probably would have just conceded. <laughs> I love the trophy. Don't get me wrong, man. Trophy was it's, it's dope. I love it. I see it every morning. Um, but Squall is nice too. <laughs> was it was it the uh, like a Squall play arts figure? Yeah, the the, the play arts Squall. Oh man, yeah. No, yeah, that's a tough that's a tough decision. I, I mean, I like trophies; they're cool and all. But I'm also a big Final Fantasy like collector, so anything like figures or anything like that, I'm all about. Absolutely. I mean, that, 
thing is just it's just beautiful and it's like and things like that just make me happy like you go here and i mean james was kind enough to provide like this awesome just awesome price support you know i mean we went we got packs we got cash there was a trophy a player at sky you know he's got this sweet setup i mean it was just awesome things like that like i mean they should never go and they're appreciated i mean it's it's just it's just a community pulling together and just like once again like how we said it just being for the being out there for the players and, and, and just going all out and, you know just having a good time and making sure that there's adequate pricing with it as well i mean it, it's it definitely makes me as a player like want to go out there and just perform and do well and just have fun at the same time right yeah and then you got something awesome that you can bring home and show everyone be like hey look i i want something like it's definitely a very cool feeling and James and Cards of Evilise, I mean, everything, he, he's our sponsor for our podcast, so shout out to him, shout out to Cards of Evilise. I mean, just such a great guy. <clears throat> and I've heard, funny enough, I've heard plenty funny. of great stories about that tournament, so go ahead. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, everything, like, you just, you just had to see it. Like, the charm was just the way everything was just set up, dude. But um, funny enough, like, I, when I was getting more competitive into, into this card game, um, I was like, I just Googled, like, oh, where can I buy uh, cards? And I kept going. It kept sending me the cool stuff. And I saw this, like, this card shop that you can buy stuff. And it was in Florida. I'm like, oh, why don't I just get stuff from there? Like, the shipping shouldn't be that bad. And, you know, go and behold, it's, it's freaking Cards of Ibelis. I've been buying from them for a while. Sorry, TCG Titans. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sergio. But the truth is, yeah, man, I, I, I bought with them for... Oh man, let me see. I bought so much stuff from them when I first started. <laughs> I hope you could bring up like a like a price history or something like a like a purchase history. All right, just to, just see? to see how yeah. much how many hundreds of dollars you spent. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was just like, I would just get like triples of like the legendary. I'm like, oh, this is a cool lightning card. Oh, this is a cool lightning card. <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> I'll take that. No, absolutely. Um, so before we move on, uh, you. I know you told me about how you got into the game. Did you start actually like back in Opus One, like when the Starter decks were first getting over here to the states? Um, what we did was, uh, I believe it was Opus Two, because I think it was even harder to get the uh, the starters around Opus One. So Opus right now, Two, yeah. I think, was just coming out. Um, we finally got our hands on these Starter decks, and then I think we eventually came to the conclu- conclusion, like, okay, like. We did a little bit of research and we're like, okay, look down the road, there's gonna be like this, this huge event, which is the, the ARG event. So let's let's practice, let's practice each other and, and see what, what we can do and, and whatnot. And it was uh, I don't know, it was it was, just, it was pretty fun. And then uh, I started thinking like, okay, now I really wanna do like this this really competitive deck. So the problem is at the time I built a dragoon deck, well a mono lightning deck, and I threw I threw the legendary Opus One Lightnings in there. I, I threw like the, the the Opus One Hero Kane in there with the EX first one. Um, I just, and I just threw a bunch of stuff in there. I'm like, oh yeah, this deck is rock. You know, I've got all these powerful cards in there. <laughs> um, no, I got wrecked several times with the Water Starter deck. There's just there was just no way around it. I'm like, man, all this money, this, my deck sucks. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I couldn't just I couldn't just throw cash at and just have it flow because it's, that's just not how this works. So um, my first real mono lightning deck was net deck because I didn't know how to build the deck, but I wanted to see okay because I didn't understand the concept of splitting between summons, backups, and forth. I didn't know the magic number. I'm like, right. okay, I need help. I need some sort of foundation. So I think fortunately enough, there was Magnet that was posting deck lists. So we're like, okay, cool. Let me check one of these out. Oh, uh-huh. look, this one plays like the Adeas and all this backups. I'm like, okay, I was buying the wrong cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all right. I mean, to be fair, I I think we took your Petite Cup list uh, when you first made Hildebrand well-known. Uh, and I think we that was like our test lightning deck that we ran all of our decks against. And even some of us even took it to tournaments and stuff like that. Just because I think... <laughs> In my opinion, I think you were one of the first to really get Hildebrand, like start playing Hildebrand, and then it seemed like Lightning just was so much faster at that point. Like it wasn't just like a like an Alcid play or anything like that. Like it was like 
that's what I'm noticing. Like when you when you go and you start looking at like the 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 breakdown of mono lightning, you see it as a very controlled deck. I cannot play control for the life of me. I like to get in there fast, do some points of damage, and get to a point where I can control the game by controlling the points and and kind of influences on what you should do next. Unfortunately, the game is no longer played like that. But at the time, you can do so much damage. You can get like three, four points of damage in by turn three. Um, that is starting to force your opponent to start like flooding the board with, with forwards, like some defenses. That's when you start playing Alsa and, and a day and start getting stuff off the board. Um, but yeah, I mean, before Hildebrand, like I checked a bunch of lists and they kept doing the same thing. Very, very control, very control. And I didn't see anybody playing that card. I, I saw a couple of lists, which got me like interested in the card. I'm like, okay, why are people playing this one? Um, and sure enough, I was like, you know what? Okay. I definitely want to include this because of how fast and how well he, you know, he, he, he functions and his survivability. And it's something new, a new mechanic that hasn't really been seen. So maybe that might give me the edge against some decks. It, it's definitely been a good card. And I mean, I, I have trouble like playing anything else because um, I always know like when he, when he gets played on the field, uh, it's 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 a safe card. Like you really have to either a overcommit to get field or just let him do some damage. Right, no. And uh, for those of you guys, if you want to see Andy, uh, he actually did a, a short little cosplay as Hildebrand uh, over on Emo Tempest's channel. And that was <laughs> that was for you guys' uh, your your card spoiler, correct? When you spoiled Shinra? Yeah. We had so many different ideas. I think our first idea, of the, we reached out to a couple of these uh, professional cosplayers out in Orlando. I think we've met them before at some conventions. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did a really awesome Riku and Pain cosplay. So we were like, oh man, that'll be dope because our card was basically Shinra and they, he can search a gold wing. So it kind of just plays into that. Um, unfortunately, they didn't have the time to do it. They were, I think, busy with another convention. So that kind of fell through. So we're like, okay, but we still like the cosplay idea. So I'm like, hmm, maybe I can piece something together. You know, I mean, I'm to find and uh, sure enough, when I was looking to see like different wigs and stuff that I can probably get, uh, the one that looked like Hildebrand's hair the most, believe it or not, is uh, the vampire from what's the what's the what's that shitty movie? <laughs> uh, Twilight. Uh, <laughs> oh man, you yeah. got a Twilight wig. Yeah, I got. <laughs> so I have a Twilight wig uh, of the vampire. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't feel bad admitting that now that I have that on my head. No, I, th I, th it, I think the cosplay turned out pretty great. I liked it. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. And I had like this, this old like suit shirt thing that I had uh, from uh, from years back. It didn't really fit any well, so I couldn't like button it up. And I was like, okay, I think I think we just get from like from like the chest up would be okay. <laughs> but sure enough, when like, when Jonathan was filming it, like he got like my legs and everything. I'm in shorts and everything. I'm just like, <laughs> it kind of like, it doesn't give you that sense of, of the rainbow but more just like this bum at a table. <laughs> no, that's, but, not, uh, that's awesome though. So that actually, that brings me to the, the big question that all the fans want to know. When, when are we going to see Andy Carmona do the, do the Mandeville dance? When's that going to happen? That, oh man, we had a video kind of like dedicated to that. Um, it didn't pan out so well, so we had to scrap it. Um, so I think, I think what I really want to do is do something at, gym. and I don't want to just have it be me. I kind of want to include just whoever's going and whoever's down to do it. I think we could do like a big group, like meme thing about it or something. If any, I mean, if, if you guys are down for it or whoever's listening. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. For it, you know? I'm sure we can, like, I, I'm down, obviously. I'm sure we can get Oki, <laughs> Okimoto will join in. We'll just have okay, Chris, yeah. Chris well, Adams, the RVA guys. We could get a, just a big, giant Manderville dance going. All right, so if you're listening to this and you're going, just comment on the uh, on the on the comment section below. We'll dance with the community or something. Just like, yo, I'm down or something like that. Right. Just I, so we can get a head count. Absolutely, know? yeah. <laughs> we can even awesome. do it like, there could be like 15 minutes left in the round and we all just stand up and just start dancing. And all the judges are just like, what's going on? Like, some we got to stop this. <laughs> They give buys for everybody. <laughs> no, yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, and obviously, you're going to Gen Con, correct? Absolutely. I am participating in this Sea of the Bat 
And then if anybody wants to know or is curious, I am playing in the Friday's bracket. So Ooh. if you want to jump on the Saturday's bracket, yeah. I avoid think, me altogether. <laughs> yeah, that'd yeah. Be so if you're fine. trying to if you're trying to avoid the Mandeville man, you might want to just go ahead and play Saturday. Uh, it's a safe bet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because this guy, uh, we're gonna go back a little bit. Uh, because you actually you went undefeated at the Boston Crystal Cup, so you're 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 known to be pretty. You got pretty good performances at these things. Yeah, surprisingly. So, what I wanted my list to do at that Boston, and that's kind of like what I took to uh, uh, what's it called to the to the Nivellus tournament was mm. something that just like just I, I've seen how some decks kind of like need time to set up, and I know some of the big things were were water decks. So I'm like, okay, I could really outpace these, but I really need some like fast hitting cards just to get in there and just do some damage. Um, sure enough, I started including the the lightning package, making sure I can at least you know get some doles in there and uh, get some damage in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but that performed exceptionally well, and I played against every element throughout my bracket. Um, I do have a six round stream if you guys want to check that out. I did play against the lovely. Warrior of Light himself, Greg Cole, amazing guy, amazing player, and all around just a great, just generous dude. I mean, if you get a chance to just meet him, talk to him, just I mean, yeah, just and one of a kind, dude. I mean, these 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 uh, these California players, I mean, they're just they're just top notch, definitely. No, yeah, I got to meet quite a few of those guys. Uh, I went to the original nationals out there, uh, and Greg actually he was a judge, um, so we really didn't get to like meet or play or anything like that uh but i mean just through everything i see on facebook i mean he just seems like the nicest guy in the world so and i i'm not sure i think he'll be a gen con i don't quote me on it but i hope he is yeah i don't i'm not too familiar either i know either, i know a few of, i know quite a few of the california guys are coming out so it should be it's gonna be a great time um and i i remember actually watching your guys's match i watched most of that stream i was actually at work and like <laughs> I'm just glued to my phone, and I'm not supposed to be on my phone at work, but, like, it's the Boston Crystal Cup. Like, I got to watch. And your guys' game was just, like, a total nail-biter. It was, like, all aggro the entire time. Oh, yeah. And I, it's funny because I was actually re-watching those uh, videos, and I kept asking, like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I had such a great positioning, and the point where I decide to attack with... Uh, with with the emperor and I lose it to uh, a titan. I believe he, he does a battle trick titan from his hand. But my thinking was because I did have the lightning in hand already. Was like okay, let me get him to like use stuff out of his hands. So when I really explode, you know, because I already got him at the at the at the four points of damage. Um, mm -hmm. So when I really explode, I can just do the three, and that's fine because I've got the haste backup and I know I have the. Uh, the lightning in hand already. All I kind of really need is just the, any sort of forward. It didn't matter which one I drew. Um, but sure enough, like, yeah, he does that, and then uh, I don't know. I, I just I didn't, wasn't really thinking. I was now that I look back at it, I was like, it would have been more advantageous if I just let it sit there, you know, and then I could just start building up uh, my core just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, it definitely wouldn't have been so close to the game had I just like slowed down, but. I mean, I was I was hyped up. I was like, okay, this is great. Like, even if I lose, I'm still in it. But I was like, okay, cool. Let me just let me just try my hand. Because if you look at it, the last the last turn that happens where I get to attack with Gilgamesh, Alcid, and Lightning, he's got two active backups and he's got about three cards in hand. Like, if you look at that situation, you're like, if if you're a, if they're in my seat and you're looking at the last thing you want to do is like overcommit your board mm -hmm. and just be short one point of damage because that's it like you, there's no coming back from that i was on my fifth point of damage too so had he had any sort of ability to either kill one of my guys which i hit him with stadio off of ex first for this fifth point of damage with Alcid, so he was able to break it like had that been an atomos who could have like pinged my Gugamesh for 8k or something like I overcommitted my hand so that would have been just another four I would have lost like, anything like that and that's just super game changing like I'll never do something like that ever again <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's definitely risky but I mean obviously it won you the game I remember uh actually like we have to like wait forever for like the next round to start and then like I see it's you and him and I'm like oh man that's gonna be great and then like the game's just like it's five minutes and it's over and I'm like 
oh man, I have to wait like another like half hour at least for the next round to start. I'm like, but that was sweet. <laughs> and it was like a total nail biter. That was awesome to watch. So you yeah, finished yeah. you finished that event. You were seven and zero, right? Absolutely. Okay, and then uh, so let's do a brief. Just talk to me about like your top sixteen, top eight match. Uh, top sixteen was against Brian Oak. He was uh, the mirror match. He was also running up. Mono Lightning, mm -hmm. but his his version was a little bit different, um, and the reason I know this is because when I played Hildebrand, uh, he picked up my card to see what it did. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, and that's that that kind of sucks when when you don't know what that card does because it's, then it becomes a lot more harder to play around it. But he did take me to game three. This was my my Swiss rounds lasted no longer than about two to three minutes. Um, they were just really fast. Um, with him, unfortunately, like he was still playing cards like um, Elua. He was playing Zemus. I wasn't. Uh, I felt that the card for what my deck wanted to do was just too slow. Mm -hmm. But now it's just a card that you should never overlook. No, um, yeah, definitely. But he took me to so he took me to game three, and he was in a position where his only out was a Raiden. But I knew he played that card. He did it to me turn uh, round two. So I was kind of like, okay, let me plan against this because I don't want to give him any valid targets. So he decided to just play it anyways. But my forwards on the field were Hildebrand and Lua. So if you target Lua, I mean, it'll cancel it. If you banish or break uh, Hildebrand, I mean, he's just going to come back to my hand. So he didn't know exactly how Hildebrand worked. So he overcommitted. He played the right in. Um, he only chose Hildebrand, so he paid 9k just to bounce Hildebrand back to my hand. Oh, like, wow. So it's basically like yeah. a 9k Leviathan, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, 9k Leviathan. And, I mean, from there it was just hard for him because he had overcommitted. Uh, I just laid the Hildebrand back down, just got my point of damages in, and, got, and called it a day. Right, okay, so then you move on to top 8. Top 8, where I get to play the fabulous... Matthew Okimoto, and I've been dying for this matchup. I really thought we were going to be on the stream, um, but I think throughout Swiss, we were we had already both been on the stream, so I think they wanted mm -hmm. to get somebody else on it, which is really cool. I mean, either way, our match was just awesome, <coughs> but that guy, that guy read me like a book, let me tell you. <laughs> every card, I mean, he knew every situation. Uh, we did get to game three miraculously, but he destroyed me. I mean, the guy's a monster. <laughs> right no. Um, he he was piloting the the um, the Earth Ice stack, and that thing just had so many different tricks and everything. My biggest concern was the Dataluma, but I didn't realize how effective the wool was going to be, especially when he started calling Ex Burst, and the two damages back to back were Odin and Adea, and it was just like, oh well, I guess I don't really, I'm not really going to get those. Right, yeah, yeah, this is this is just looking bad. So then I, we got finally to the point where I can make an explosive play, try to dole some stuff with lightning. But by that time, dude, his for his, his his forwards, it was like he had like Sid Reigns, he had Setzer, he had Terra, he had Wool. I was like, what 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 did I do throughout the match? But he also <laughs> made it to where like my Exodus wouldn't do anything; it would be obsolete. Like he had a two cost. A uh, three cost, a four cost, a five cost. I was like, damn, dude, like, he, he played it really well to the point where nothing, none of my answers that I had were going to be as efficient as they should be. Right now, yeah. I I don't, the way he plays, I mean, he'll take early damage, and I mean, he just plays so well. Uh, I, I got to watch quite a bit of, the, of him streaming, and then I know, obviously, I watched all of him and Max in the finals, and just the way he, like, I don't know if it's the way he presents himself. I've never had a chance to play him, unfortunately. Um, so hopefully at Gen Con we can we can meet up for a match at least. Um, but oh, man. just definitely the way he plays. Treat. I mean, he, like if you're watching, like his eyes are always like he's he's counting or he's like calculating something, but he, he's always like thinking about what's the next card, what card did he play, what card did he draw, what card can be a huge burst. <laughs> you know, he's, he's always like calculating things like that. Uh, at the same time, I believe there's like a little like jumping in his head. Like, <laughs> 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 it's like okay. a metronome. Right, no. Okay, so you fall just just barely short of getting your Nationals invite. So now now you're heading to Gen Con here, and what do we got? We got about two, two and a half weeks about? 
Not even. It's next week. Is it well, next week? Out. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I fly out. Uh, I'm flying out Wednesday, so I'll be there about Wednesday afternoon or evening. Okay. Uh, it's just so we can get the housing thing situated. Right. Yeah, and it's about a. It's a. I think it's like a four or five hour drive for me. So I'm just driving straight up there. Um. So. Uh. What do your? How do you feel about the sealed? What I, I'm. I'm a horrible sealed player. So like. I'm just going in for maybe I can try to get like a top cut. I don't know. I'm I just want to go for the box at least. <laughs> yeah, definitely the the price support and the, the box is just dope. But um, so sealed for me. I play a lot of Hearthstone, uh, so I do like playing Arena. I know it's not really quite the same, but you do get to like draft your your deck every now and then. Um, uh, but yeah, so the last draft I, we played well. I assume you played as well, um, was the, the OP6 pre-release. Mm -hmm. uh, I did, let me see. We did play the TCG Titan once. I got the trophy for that one too. It was pretty dope. There wasn't that many people. It was like eight, nine people. Oh yeah, but, I, think, um, I think I saw the, the picture on Facebook of that. Oh yeah, it was like, it was like super last minute unfortunately, but at least some people showed up, which is really nice. Um, yeah. But, um, but the, the it, it's all about like what you kind of really draw because uh, at the time the card that was like really helping me out I I, I pulled the uh, legendary Ninwu and the uh, legendary um, Kuja and I was like oh, okay, okay I can I can work with this uh, I was just thinking like the whole time I was opening packs I'm like yeah, I hope I get Estinian that seems to be the card that can win draft but um, yeah unfortunately like my decks weren't that great but those cards were just so powerful. That they, they just swing the momentum in your favor. Mm -hmm. um, so now going into this draft, and it's it's just open six, right? Like they're just gonna do six packs. I mean, nine packs. I think it's yeah. I think it's just nine packs of open six and nice. throw together. You definitely what you can. Wanna, yeah, you definitely want to include Earth card. Still feel like they're pretty strong, and um, that Cactor is just the nuts, you know, because you start playing all these different colors. That Cactor can ping for like 16, 24,000 damage. Oh yeah, so, absolutely yeah. yeah. I, 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 unfortunately, I only had one in my uh, in my pre-release kit, but every time I drew it, I was like, "Oh, sweet! I got instant removal of anything that they put on the board." Absolutely, you start like tapping all your back row, like, "Oh, that's four thousand, eight thousand, sixteen. <laughs> 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 I remember playing it against this, this one person. I mean, a lot of people when when the pre-release things come out, they're like, "They're <clears throat> you," but then um, so I play the card, and they're like, "Oh, so is it doing like two? Like like eight thousand damage. I was like, no, that's doing um sixteen thousand points of damage. <laughs> so, yeah, and they're just like, like, oh, all right. <laughs> so I just vaporized my card, but yeah. Right. No. no but the, that definitely seems to be like the way to go. Is just like make sure you have like enough Earth cards. Uh, they seem to be like pretty strong in, in draft. But uh, I I mean I feel pretty confident. But that's just the most even playing field that you can do at TCGs. It's it's random. Right, no. And I, I think it's going to be a, a lot more casual experience uh, for the most part. Obviously, there's still guys that are really wanting to get their invite. Um, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I want my invite. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got, I got faith that you will definitely you will definitely be at Nationals. You will get your invite. Um, so, uh, obviously, I don't want to spoil whatever deck you're going to take uh, for the Constructed. Um, but what are... Uh, what are what is one Opus Six card that uh, you think is gonna be like, what like meta defining or just like a, a big impact on the meta? Um, I mean, I, I definitely see the. A lot of people would, would jump right away, and maybe like you know Renoa or Astinian, but to be honest, what I'm seeing a lot of play of, I feel like it's really gonna shift the way decks are built. Is the the uh, the water card the water for Layla that brings the Vikings back? Mm -hmm. That card can generate so much value. Well, it's the Vikings that are generating the value. She brings them out. So a lot of what's happening now, or the way I believe like the decks are, are moving forward, are the are the amount of forts you can put out with the least amount of commitment to CP. So basically more CP value. If you can play something that basically gets you a free card, that's definitely the way to go. Especially that that you know turbo ice discard, just mono ice in general. The way that's being played right now, a lot of people think. Oh, well, that is like the boogeyman right now, but believe it or not, I mean, the boogeyman changes every like five months or something. Like, I remember Minwoo was like the backup Minwoo was like the boogeyman. It's like, oh, watch out, this card like shuts down fire, there's no reason to play it, it makes lightning obsolete, like, don't play it. 
and I just accept that challenge. So then afterwards, the card then to look out for was Al Cid. And Al Cid was like, you know, oh, that's the boogeyman. Watch out, don't you know, just play mono, mono lightning because you can play him and he's just going to instantly win for you. You see, it just, there's like always that, like that trend, you know, mind you, those are cards and then other people are now talking about a deck. So I do see the difference, mm-hmm. but other than that, it's just, it always goes back to how you're willing to uh, adjust the way you build the deck for what's being played. And that's kind of like what I did with the whole Hildebrand thing. Like, nobody was playing it, but I decided, okay, let me throw him in there because what's being played now, you know, I don't want to say because of, uh, of Sam bringing, like, Earth to, 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 the, to the limelight, a lot of people were, like, picking up on the on the Earth thing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were playing, like, the Shantoto. So, you know, he survives it. So that's kind of like how you adapt to it because if you really sit down and look at each element, you'll see that there is a card for each scenario. Um, it's but at the end of the day, it's like okay, how well can you build a deck to where you can uh, kind of like conform to to what's being played and and just make it your own, you know? Right. No, absolutely. Yeah, you definitely gotta get definitely gotta take all that into consideration whenever you're building a deck. Um, so uh, briefly, I also want to talk about uh, you. Obviously, I said before that you're part of the Triple Triad podcast. Uh, why don't you go ahead and just tell us. How did that all come to be? I know emo. I know uh, Jonathan had emo Tempest as his channel. Uh, how did the podcast come to be? So, back in the day, we used to do uh, deck profiles and, and um, just kind of like card talks or card of the tip, like card of the week or something, or mm-hmm. like tech tips. And this was actually for Yu Gi Oh. So, if you ever go on his channel and you look like at his older, older, older videos, you'll see a, a young Mandeville man himself talking about Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And, oh, I'm uh, definitely whatnot. I'm definitely going back. <laughs> as soon as we finish this interview, I'm going back. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we, we were like pretty familiar with, uh, with kind of like doing uh, YouTube videos for, for cards, but we never actually really sat down and did a podcast. Um, so we started listening to, we listened to a lot of the... Um, the Crystal Tower, and really liked what those guys were doing. Mm -hmm. Um, And we really liked what the RBA Returners was doing. Okay, maybe we can do something like to localize Florida as kind of like its its base for something. Um, Choker Bros was already doing their thing, you Mm -hmm. know. Um, So we're like, well, I mean, a podcast is a podcast. If people want to listen to ours, that'd be great. Um, But if they they don't, I mean, that's cool because there's also so many other great choices out there one of them is not like i'm not gonna say like, oh one's one's better than the other or anything but you know ours is okay <laughs> no, i'm I... glad for every listener that that wants to tune in and, and hear us rant for an hour but you know the no. content's there <laughs> no i like abs- i absolutely enjoy it and i appreciate you guys making um, content uh before i actually joined the choker bros i was planning on doing something for like the st louis scene and then obviously i got invited to join those guys so and then it was just like oh okay well, let me go ahead and just do oh. that so I'm glad that I can do the this little like choke of views as my own little like thing, apart from that. Oh, dude, I love it. I mean, I, I think it's just one of the, the better ideas out there. Just kind of like really get one on one with with a lot of the, the players in different areas, and you really get to understand like where they come from, what's their background, how are they, you know, part of the the community, what do they bring to the community, and overall, you know, kind of just get a little bit more personal with them. So at the end of the day, if you want to like. Like, uh, right now, since we're all going to Gen Con, I'm, I'm, I'm no celebrity or anything, but, it, I mean, I'll take a picture with, with whoever, and I'm definitely going to go around, like, I'm getting your picture, Cody, for sure, you know, like, I'm, I want to do, like, a huge, like, just Mandeville pose with, with everybody, but... I oh, mean, no, yeah, absolutely. Any, anybody anybody listening who's, like, more of, like, a casual player, but is going to, like, a big tournament and really want to see these people out there, um, we just want to show that we are very approachable. Um, if you have big questions that you want to talk about, maybe like a, a deck idea or card choices, something like that, like you know, don't be afraid because we are just players as well. You know, we're just part of the community just as much as they are. No, yeah, absolutely. Like we are completely approachable. I actually I went to a, an LQ this past weekend and had like my first person like come up to me and like recognize who I was like from the Choker Bros, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. Like this is sweet. Like what a great feeling. Like. Somebody's actually like actually listening or watching our podcast, and it's just a cool feeling. Just to, I guess, kind of like see see that. Absolutely, and it's cool to just like, I mean, 
normally when when do you get a chance to like meet up with like people from california people from florida you know and just like oh man we're just gonna hang out and like do stuff that that never happens but now we have this opportunity so i feel like the more this community grows like the smaller the u.s gets because now you're outreaching to all these different states and it's just like oh my god i know people here i know people there it's just, and it you know, to be honest, it kind of makes traveling easier because let's say, okay, now I got to go like a, a tournament alone, but, you know, I can reach out to one of you guys and be like, oh, hey, you know, like I might not have a place to stay or something. And sure enough, I mean, oh yeah, depending yeah. on the situation, you know, I'm pretty sure to be more than happy to, to, to host one another. Absolutely. And I got a couch right here with, with, uh, <laughs> with Andy Carmona's name on it. Like <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> nice. once we get a big St. Louis tournament, uh, but but no, I think the community definitely makes the game a hundred times better. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, in short, uh, we're probably getting ready to go ahead and wrap this up. Uh, Andy, I wish you the best of luck at Gen Con. I cannot wait to see you, man. And actually meet in person, obviously. <laughs> yeah, um, man, it's, it's going to be one hell of an experience. Um, spoilers, I'm playing Mono Lightning. Ah, there, it's out. Uh-oh. Everybody knows. I'm writing it down. <laughs> He's playing. He's playing lightning. I, there might be a chance of Hildebrand. It might. It might be in there. Um, I might, <laughs> depending on what what's happening, we'll say in the next forty eight hours, I might actually cut everything lightning relative except Hildebrand. Oh. Yeah, there'll still be lightning cards. There'll still be a mono lightning deck, but it might be played completely different. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that that's not a good thing. That could be a very bad thing, but. I think I think I think you're gonna do just fine at the uh, at Gen Con. Um, so before we go, uh, any shout outs that you have? Uh, yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, definitely shout outs to my homies, the the Triple Triad crew. Um, you got Emil Tempest, John Zuri himself, his brother Albert Zuri, who makes like the greatest uh, just art for us. He's our basically our media manager. He's the one that really gets uh, those nice thumbnails and just the content that we need for it. Um, just really, really awesome, talented uh, brothers. I mean, they're really great guys. Uh, definitely shout out to you, Cody, man. Uh, definitely awesome to just be a part of this and being able to just like talk about my personal experiences. And oh no, I I appreciate having you. I I mean, I was kind of like, oh, I need I need more guests. Like, I'm just gonna start sliding in people's DMs on Facebook and just hoping they'll say yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> you were one of the first guys. I was like, yeah, absolutely, I'm down. I'm like, sweet. Yeah, I think I said hell yeah like out loud. People like, <laughs> were just like, "What the hell?" Like, yeah, a little cubicle. <laughs> <laughs> um, shout outs to uh, TCG Titans, uh, Sergio Bob, uh, who is now a father. He had a beautiful little baby girl. Um, he is uh, the basically the, the founder of TCG Titans. Uh, he is helping us out. He does help us out uh, acquire cards. Um, so he's kind of basically our our uh, official sponsor unofficially. Uh huh. No, that, that's awesome. And congratulations to him. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just the rest of the community. I mean, you know, shout outs to the people listening and, you know, giving us a chance to fill them with, with content, whether they agree with it or not. Right. Now, just having that having the opportunity to do it is, is a great feeling. All right. And um, I'm going to do a quick shout out, uh, obviously, to you, Andy. I appreciate you joining me tonight. Uh, I know it's late. Um, and just... If you guys, you guys listening, be sure to go uh, subscribe to Emo Tempest. Uh, they they're putting out great content. Uh, I know he just actually released a video talking about mono wa mono water, correct? Yeah. So he does a lot of his own stuff. Like mm -hmm. it's not, it's really his channel. Sometimes I'll help him out. I'll give him some. Um, one of the things that I really like to, to do with him is uh, is the um, we have the the job class series. That's something that I really like to work with them and kind of like figure out what decks we can do. Um, we got, we had that idea, like I don't know, it just came about nowhere. I think we were playing tactics at the time. And we're like, oh man, like all these job classes. Like, yeah, wouldn't it be cool if we talked about like different job classes for, for cards? But uh, that's definitely one of my favorite segments. Definitely check out uh, the Dragoon segment if you guys are interested in how Dragoons should be played. But that's like pretty opus five or something or six. No, yeah, absolutely. I've been. I think I've watched just about every video that. You and him and all you guys have put out. Uh, I love the podcast. Thank you. And I mean, uh, just just thanks for joining me, man. And, oh, man, uh, it's a pleasure. And then one last shout out, obviously, to Cards of Evil East. Thank you guys for uh, sponsoring our podcast and supporting us. Uh, 
And that'll uh, that'll do it for episode two of Choco View. So, Andy, go ahead and say goodbye. Hasta luego, brochachos. <laughs> see you later, guys. We'll see you next episode. Don't forget to buy the hill brancher. Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs>